Thank you, Charlie, but no, I was not a ghost writer. I was writing about <laughs> ghosts. And I don't know anything about growth hormones. <laughs> to read to you from my new book, I Love a Broad Margin to My Life. And um, this is a 225-page um, a poem. And I am able to tell it to you, uh, tell you that fact that it's a poem, even though my publishers are trying to disguise it, you know, because they, they they're sure that poetry does not sell, so they're trying to tell everybody that this is a memoir, but it really is a poem. <laughs> and I can tell it to you tonight because this is National Poetry Month. <laughs> so I'm just going to go right into the middle of this. I love a broad margin to my life is a quote from Henry David Thoreau. Yes. And uh, when he was thinking of a margin, he's thinking of making lots of room between him and other people. And, but he's also thinking about national borders because, uh, because he, was, um, he knew that his neighbors were going to war against Mexico. And uh, the repercussions of, of that war continue to this day. So I am going to just skip to page 135. And so you know this is in a long context. I am writing about many journeys. And people are on the road. They're on the Silk Road. They're, they're migrating across. Uh, across national borders everywhere and uh, one of these j journeys or many of these journeys are the peace marches that we've been on. In San Francisco we were a peace dragon with 100,000 pairs of feet walking up and down the city hills. From rooftops and balconies rained rice as at weddings and water on the summer's day, and rose petals and red and motley confetti. In Washington, D.C., on International Women's Day 2003, our peace dragoness was a mile long, winding our way to the White House. One million people marched in Rome, and thousands of Shiite and Sunni Muslims together in Baghdad. Oh, democracy, I will make inseparable cities with their arms about each other's necks. For the first time in history, the area in front of the White House fence was banned to demonstrators. The U.S. Park Police stopped us at Pennsylvania Avenue. So we sat in. We sat ourselves down upon the historic ground, our house, our street. The rangers are friendly and will converse, used to being helpful to tourists. We have a permit. Didn't you get a copy? You promised we could parade in front of the White House, our house, our street. The permits for only 25 people. Okay, so let's count off 25. One, two, three, four, five. I was ninth, nine, my lucky number. I said my number and stepped between the rangers. Running at us, whooping, cheering, came a pink clad crowd, the tail of the dragon. They had gotten through the police line at the other end of Pennsylvania Avenue. We rushed to meet them, hugging, holding one another, happy we completed the ring around our house. A troop gathers around me. Some walk by my side and some behind, and some embrace my arms or neck. Thicker they come, a great crowd, and I in the middle. 
The encirclement lasted for moments. Then the crowd cooperated with the police, who asked them and ordered them off the street. They retreated to the borders of Lafayette Park. There they stayed, keeping an eye on the 25 of us who stood at the curb of the White House sidewalk. In the middle of the park, drummers, Native Americans, drummed, banging day and night. The president won't sleep till he calls off shock and awe. Wave to the drummers, dance to the drumming, sing and dance to our own singing, ululation, and give peace a chance. Wave to the peace marchers, wave to the police, wave to the children of Iraq. Everyone I saw was nonviolent. The man with the bullhorn and the blow-ups of abortions disappeared. Counter-demonstrators disappeared. Everywhere I looked was peace. Each woman cared for the women around her, and love grew. Love and love returning, love and returning love, love reverberating, love magnifying. I felt love palpable and saw love manifest. It's pink. Air and light turned dawn pink, the color I imagined yin, the color of aired blood, the pink mist of explosions. I was desperate for miracle. Perhaps the reason I could open my arms wide and gather up great big pink balls of peace and hurl them east toward Iraq and turn and hurl them at the White House. I'm not the only one. Other women also threw pink balls of peace to the Iraqi children to protect them and at the White House. Catch George, catch Laura. The many kinds of police kept arriving. First, the law enforcement park rangers, who I think are federal police. Then came the Metropolitan Police, which included mounted police and motorcycle cops. Then SWAT teams, tax squads. Easy to practice nonviolence with the friendly park rangers. How about giving me your code pink button for my wife? We petted and talked to the horses, but the SWAT tax one-way glass over faces Everyone in the same robot stance, a rank of robots, weapons. Any women? Can't tell. Impervious to us. The officers shouting and giving us orders was a DC cop. Get off the street. Arrest will begin in 20 minutes. 20 minutes and more passed. He announced again and again, Arrest in 20 minutes. They didn't really want to arrest us. They hoped we would go away. We were having a standoff. Without discussion, we 25 women all together took slow steps backward through the yellow tape. We waved our arms and pink scarves and ribbons waving goodbye to our supporters who stood witness on the three far sides of the park, waving goodbye to the police. We are getting off the street. We walked backward, broke the yellow tape, up onto the curb, into the restricted zone, White House sidewalk. Slowly, imperceptibly moving so as not to provide so as not to provoke violent arrest, singing salam, peace, shalom, we reach the White House fence. Two grandmothers ago, our ancestresses chained themselves to this black iron fence. I held its bars in my hands, laid my face against the barricade, and felt tears rise. The other women were crying too, and cheering, and dancing. Now the police saw. 
we had unambiguously broken a law. Time to start the arrest. All the police came to attention. The rangers blocking the left side of the street. The tax squad the right. And the city cops in a blue line facing us. The width of the street between. On the White House roof, a man in uniform aimed a high-powered, long-range sharpshooter rifle at us. He aimed it put it down, aimed, put it down. A van drove into the cordon area. I think the insignia on it said federal prison. Two or three cops unfolded a tarp and taped it onto the side of the van, covering over the words. I got afraid. They're hiding the place where they would take us. They would disappear us. They're going to drive us through the streets of the Capitol in an unmarked white vehicle. No one would know what became of us. Keep singing. Keep loving. Say in unequivocal words, I love you. Hear, I love you, Maxine. The Metropolitan Police, the men, stood in one line formation. The women, we, the demonstrators, drew one another close. We were a bouquet knot of pink roses. How can it be that all the cops are men and all for peace women? I can't live in such a world. I don't want to keep living out the myth that men fight and women mother. One boy crossed the wide floor, chose one girl, escorted her back to the other side where he arrested her. We regressed the junior high dance. <laughs> My wife is going to kill me, said a black cop. I'm arresting Alice Walker. <laughs> Don't hold hands with me, said a white cop, shaking off his partner, who was smiling up at him. Don't take my arm, either. <laughs> they had each one of us stand by herself alongside the van and took our pictures. Quit smiling. What are you smiling for? This is an arrest. This is your mugshot, not your prom photo. I was smiling from happiness. My government will not disappear me. The tarp was but backdrop for shooting pigs. <laughs> and the beautiful pink aura was still upon me. My cop and I did not speak. A woman officer in casual uniform, no gun, took my purse, hair clips, pink poncho, my earrings, and put them in a plastic bag. Ready for handcuffing, I presented my hands, wrists together in front. But my arresting officer signaled in back. I won't be able to write, to touch, to catch myself, and will fall on my face. I turned about, held my arms behind me as high as I could, bending way forward, making my gestures large for the witnesses to see. Handcuffs in this age of new plastics work like the ties for bread and trees. My arrestor could have tightened the cable tie so that it cut into the skin. The hands turned blue, burst. These police were kind to tie us loosely. Our belongings taken, our pictures taken, handcuffed, we were, we were made to get into a paddy wagon, about eight per wagon. There are cages, like dog cages, between the front seat and the side benches. I sat in the middle of a bench, my shoulders touching women's shoulders beside me, my legs touching women's legs before me. Women outside pounded, drummed on the van. 
through the windshield. We could see them applauding us. Somebody said, there's my daughter. The van started up. The crowd parted. Let the van through. It got quiet. We were driving away from the magic. The rose light went out. demonstration, there were writers, poets, artists, dancers, musicians, actors, puppeteers, and we all brought the best of our art that we could. In fact, the Poets for Peace brought a huge roll of poems trying to deliver it to the White House. And we gave it our best non-violent art. And then about 12 or 20 days later, shock and awe started. So of course, then we think, well, what's the use? Um, what good, uh, what effect, what power did all of our art and our non-violence do? And so we go into uh, despair and doubt, and um, and then um, there's just a, a little parenthesis where I am trying to give myself some hope that our art uh, does do some good, but I am not very sure of um, of this hope. And so I just have it in parenthesis. <clears throat> now is this, I, I'm hoping that this is a possibility, or maybe a faith. An act of love I do this morning saves a life on a far future battlefield. And the surprising love I feel that saves my life comes from a person whose soul, somehow corresponding with my soul, doing me a good deed 1,000 years ago. I think that this is very um, subtle and strange and um, hesitant, so I'm just going to read it again to make it more to make it more firm in the real world. An act of love I do this morning saves a life on a far future battlefield. And the surprising love I feel that saves my life comes from a person whose soul, somehow corresponding with my soul, doing me a good deed 1,000 years ago. Kingston, everybody. Amazing. She has books for sale, and they're all totally well worth it. Also, the anthology is for sale. So I'm going to need all of your help. Um, I realized recently that my whole personal economy was based on emotional blackmail. And I was emotionally blackmailing all the people in my life and they were emotionally blackmailing me in return. And it was just like we were passing this empty envelope back and forth over and over again. And I was like, I'm going to call their bluff. 
And then it turned out I was the only one who wasn't bluffing, who, who was bluffing, and they all were completely, like, serious, and they posted all my shit on the internet, and, like, all my emotional trauma that I'd caused and that I experienced was, like, on crapface.com, and I got on only three out of five stars, which really hurt. You know, my most horrible traumas. Three out of five stars, what the fuck? That's, that's crapface.com for you. I mean, they're, they're really mean on there. Anyway, so I need your help to, like, come up with some, some blackmail material, like, emotional blackmail material on basically everybody, including all of you. So if you could just, like, spy on each other and, you know, try to find some emotional dirt, um, just come up to me afterwards and we'll work it out. Um, I really appreciate it.